At first, I wasn't sure what woke me up. Hell, I didn't even realize where I was until my eyes began to focus on the darkness around me, only disturbed by the light from the muted flat-screen TV hanging on the wall. Full awareness came when my eyes landed on the bed I was sitting next to, where my father lay fast asleep. I straightened my slumped posture in the uncomfortable chair, my head snapping to the sound of footsteps outside the room's door. It eased open, and she hesitantly stepped inside the room, jumping a little when she noticed my presence. Mr. Shu? Yeah. Sorry I startled you. Oh, no problem. I just need to check and see if your father needs to be changed. It's time to turn him, too. I nodded. You doing all that by yourself tonight? No. Another aide is coming to help me. I stared at the tiny woman. The beautiful tiny woman with silky-looking dark skin and a puff of kinky hair sitting on top of her head. Her eyes were big and expressive. Her lips were so full and pouty, it looked like they were made for kissing. Tiny gold earrings trailed up her earlobes, and a white t-shirt peeked from under her green scrubs. The ID badge hanging from a lanyard around her neck read, Denver, nurse tech. I'd seen her taking care of my father before, but she usually had someone with her to help. This was the first time she'd come in this room alone. Uh, I can help you, I offered. She frowned and shook her head. I can't let you do that. That's my job. Standing from the chair, I stretched and said, I want to do it, so tell me what to do. The door creaked open again, and a woman wearing green scrubs that matched Denver's stepped into my father's room, her eyes swinging from me to Denver. You still need my help, she asked. I don't think so, Denver said slowly. I'm a helper, I explained. Oh, okay. Holler if you need me, Denver, the other lady said and rushed out the door. Denver smiled nervously at me. Um, we should change him first. I nodded and watched as she pulled the covers back, checking my father's diaper. When she left to grab some supplies off her cart, I stared down at Omar Mitchell. He was once so big and scary to me, but now? Now he was thin, frail, withering away both mentally and physically. I glanced at the door and then back at my father. There were so many words I wanted and needed to say to him, but just like every other night that I found myself in his room, I couldn't. <laughs>